Today we're going to be reviewing The Walking Dead, A World Beyond, Episode 4, and of course breaking down some things you might have missed, and explaining them. Of course, at the end of this episode we got another massive thing with the CRM, but this time it was an end credit scene, where we saw the actual experiments that the CRM do. Now we actually saw that, so it confirms so much, and explains so many things. So we'll get straight into that. Of course, before we do begin, make sure you subscribe so you're the first to hear about The Walking Dead and the first to see my videos. And of course, make sure you join the Discord. So, how was this episode, first of all? Well, yeah, we had a good run. This episode was uh, quite hard to watch at times. Looks like it's me and you, kid. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why did she talk like that? That'd be one thing. But it's cool. We'll figure it out. How come he's smiling? <laughs> hey, how come you're smiling? Hey, what are you smiling for, you bastard? How dare you show any emotion or personality as a character? I know what she means, though. I do get disturbed whenever I see Silas with any emotion on his face whatsoever. The Silas and Iris scenes genuinely made me uncomfortable. It's like he just changes into this little creature when he's around Iris. It's like seeing a turtle without a shell. You don't see it, do you? It would be fucking quite odd to see that. You do, you've seen it before. They don't like seeing it. It's not right. Like Silas right now. I don't know why he's being all happy. It's quite odd and disturbing. And they try to do this effective John Lewis advert shit. <laughs> look, just look at it. What, just stop. <laughs> I've never had soda in a can before. Please don't. Oh no. They had this kind of nice sweet scene with Silas and Iris. But then after that he goes apeshit again on an empty and it's not even in the way where it's, it's like we see that he gets angry still, he gets reminded of stuff. All he did was kill one empty. And he had Vietnam flashbacks and an ape shit. We saw in the last episode that he learned from this. He put that energy into helping. But then in this episode, it's not that he was like protecting Iris, killing all the empties. He went ape shit and started punching it. He put the fucking wrench down and he got like joy out of punching it. I thought the wolf scene was really cool, but it's just another time where I've seen Huck and just wanted so much. He could actually prove herself, be a really cool character. Maybe fight the wolf protecting Hope. But she didn't. She might as well have just not been there. And that's the same thing with every episode we've had so far. She could have protected Hope. It would have been cool. But look at this scene right now. Like, if Huck wasn't there, it would have just been Hope slipping away from a wolf. Huck is utterly useless. And it, it would be fine if she was likable. Maybe she was funny. But she's not. She's just bad. Everybody in. I thought you only used your camera to document stuff. Since when do you take pictures of actual people? I don't know. Since now. Elton is dangerously close to being like Althea, yeah, it's not even funny. Put the camera down. Yeah, he likes taking pictures, but he doesn't know why. You never talk about your parents. And what was your dad like? When you were in the army or whatever, right? Wow, some actual Harker backstory. Okay, I take it back. I personally think there's a way this character can redeem herself and actually be a good character. Alright, let's just get into it then. Oh, fuck me, I was wrong. Give a shit sometimes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Hope. Oh, so it's not a Huck's backstory flashback scene, it's a Hope's one. We still have yet to see what the fuck. So we actually see a scene of when Hope was begging her dad not to go, and of course, Hope's dad is Iris's dad too. But we see how certain he is that joining the Civic Republic is going to help more people, not just to make a cure himself, but to pass on information and lessons to other people as well. Which means he could just lose his use, and if he starts doing what he's been doing, which is, you know, sending secret messages to Iris about the dangers of the CRM, and that he's in danger himself, he really could already be dead. Let's finally get on to that end credit scene. So the first time we ever saw any evidence that the CRM, this dark organisation, were experimenting on people was with Heath. Heath just disappeared. Now, whilst it's true that not all characters have to return, it's clear Heath likely will. But unfortunately, just not in the way that you might want. A year after Heath went missing, we then had season 8, where Rick Grimes was then taken and put into a container with A marked on it. Then later on, she tried it with Negan. 
She then tried it with Gabriel years later in season 9. What all these characters have in common is she trying to get them all bit. All three of them were also A's. Now we look at this person, this main subject in the end credit scene. He's marked as an A and he's also bitten. So this confirms further that these three characters avoided a pretty nasty fate. So we now know for sure that A are the people that are bitten and sent off to the CRM to be experimented on. Then the Bs are the soldiers. Now this doesn't mean that Rick Grimes is dead. We heard Jadis say Rick Grimes is strong. Can you help him? So although Rick isn't dead, he's not being experimented on as a walker. He's still a soldier being held against his will. He's a B. Jadis gave off A's to people in exchange for supplies. She'd give off B's to go with them. So she's just giving them a soldier, aka Rick, so she gets to go and live her normal life in the city. It's interesting because it's so similar to what Troy did in season 3 of Fear the Walking Dead. He's timing the walkers and how long it takes these people to turn different types of people. They're doing the exact same thing here. Notice how all of these people have been bitten. Now this woman said this person was called Dr. Samuel Abbott. So he was a doctor, which makes me believe it's something more personal, like it's a punishment for what he did with Iris's dad or something that he knew. And that's why he's been sacrificed for experimentation. It's more personal, he, he must have known something because it's unusual that a doctor would be wasted by the CRM. That's until the camera pans down and we see a picture full of doctors, including Samuel Abbott, who is just seen as a walker, and Iris's dad. This woman also says that this doctor is from the Portland community. So it's like Elizabeth has taken a doctor from each of the other two communities and used them to experiment. She calls out the next subject and with it showing us this picture when she says that, it's likely another doctor, including Iris's dad. Now it's interesting they're showing us this, it's really cool. But don't you think they should have waited a bit or shown us something a bit more scary? Like, we kind of knew it was experimentation and we pictured something like this. But it's the same issue that Filler Walking Dead runs into every time they bring up the CRM, which review will be out tomorrow, by the way. But every time they mention the CRM in fear, they're showing us a really soft side to it. And I don't think that's a very good idea, considering how hyped up and scared we're meant to be of the people that took Rick and what they do to people. But what do you think of it? Do you think they should have shown us even more or even less because this is stuff we should have seen in the Rick Grimes movies and with him is when we should have first seen this. And how are you finding World Beyond? Did you like this episode? Do you think it's getting better and better with each one or worse and worse? Let me know down below in the comments. Press the like button if you enjoyed this video and of course if you did enjoy it then make sure you check out my other videos. Check out this one to find out who really drew on the phone that Michonne found in her final episode. The answer is quite shocking. And check this one out for a full location reveal breakdown on where Rick Grimes is and where the CRM are from episode 3. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you're the first to hear about The Walking Dead and the first to see my videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.